What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, did you know Apple has a top secret lab? Well, it was a secret until now. See, a new report from Bloomberg says Apple opened a secret laboratory in northern Taiwan earlier this year to develop new technologies for thinner, lighter, and brighter displays for Apple devices. The facility is located in a remote science park with no external Apple branding, and the Big A has recruited people from local display makers, AU Optronics, and Qualcomm to help develop new LCD and OLED technologies. I'm also hoping Apple has this top secret battery lab somewhere that we don't know about, otherwise, we're still stuck with this. Whew, it's so ugly. Now, echoing the Bloomberg report, Digitime says Apple is also developing flexible OLED display tech for iDevices at the newly discovered lab. Now, this secret lab sounds good, but we won't be reaping any of its benefits in the near future. That's after KGI Securities claims the next iPad Air 3 will be released in the first half of 2016, but is unlikely to get a 3D touch display because of production issues in the supply chain. Apple Insider corroborates reports Apple is developing a new pressure-sensitive display that can be scaled up to iPad screen sizes, but also confirms the tech won't be ready for the release of the iPad Air 3 or even around the time of the iPhone 7, so it could be at least a year out. Now, Apple can't scale the current iPhone 6S's 3D touch to something like a 9.7-inch display, and that's why they're working on a comparable tech for larger screen sizes. Even for something like the 12.9-inch iPad Pro, and you all know how I feel about that. All right, in Apple Music News, a media research report estimates that Apple Music will have around 8 million paying subscribers by the end of this year. And that number is expected to more than double to nearly 20 million at the end of 2016. It won't catch Spotify with currently over 20 million subscribers and 75 million users, but that number would solidify Apple Music as the number two player in streaming music. Apple's music service is also finally getting support on Sonos with a public beta. The Sonos controller app was updated with beta support for the streaming service, giving users access to their music library and playlists for streaming in multiple rooms. And you know what? That's a good Apple. And if you're an Apple retail employee, the Cupertino Fruit Company is gifting its staff a free nine-month subscription for Apple Music. That's in addition to the pair of your Beats headphones they hooked up staff with for the holidays. Now, there are no confirmed reports if you can get hired for the holiday season, get your free stuff, and then peace out. Kind of like how I do samples at Costco. All right, exclusive content is a big deal with any streaming service, and this one is huge for Apple Music and fans of Taylor Swift. See, on December 20th, a new backstage concert film called the 1989 World Tour Live will be available exclusively on Apple Music, you know, if you're someone who's into that kind of thing. I know there are a lot of Apple biters who force their significant others to watch this, so trust me, I've met them, so I felt like I should at least give you a sneak peek of the trailer, so yeah, here it is. I wonder what would happen if I invited the most amazing artists in the world to come out with me and perform on my stage. All right, Brian. Would plan. they do it? Okay, cool. Oh man. I wonder what it would be Dude, like. Dude, you have to, to see this. So it's like lost in it every night. That arena. Oh never my gosh. It looks like I'm there. Oh, wait, my. It would be like. Oh this. my god. That. Is... Oh, Taylor. Taylor, this I love you, Taylor. Hey, 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 somebody quit his mic. We're quit. Cool. Brian, we're quit. Wait, wait, no. No, okay. Oh. So, yeah, you know, whatever to each their own. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show, but a quick shout out to my Apple biter, Kyle from Houston, Texas, who found my Apple Watch after it slipped off my wrist in the airport in Vancouver. He tracked me down and gave it back to me. Right here, true story. So if you still wanna be a part of the show, send your emails and your positive or brutal feedback to the Apple at CNET.com or tweet me at Brian Tong and you might find yourself here as we wrap up 2015. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.